Hey, my name's Carter, and this is How to 3D Scan Your City. Oh, I'm running late. <laughs> yeah, bro, I'm walking downstairs right now. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm on the way. My bad, my bad, my bad. Let's go. Bro, I found this immaculate spot. We're at right here. You want 3D scan it? We're going 3D scan okay, it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Check it out. Scannable. Very, very scannable. We doing it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so for the first scan, Tyga used Polycam, which is a free app that has a paid subscription service uh, with upgraded benefits. Thankfully, the weather outside was pretty cloudy uh, and we also went closer to noon, which I would recommend if you're trying to scan things outside because it will avoid baked in lighting or harsh shadows. Taiga also learned a very valuable lesson, which is be aware of your surroundings. And this is what the final scan looked like, but I'll be doing more with this one in the next video. For the next scan, Taiga took a bit of a break and I brought the drone out. I got a long, straight shot of the entire wall going from left to right and then went back up and got the top. After that, I took a 360 photo from the location and I'll be using that as an HDRI in the next video. It was super simple and Polycam's new feature allows you to AI generate the top and bottom of the frame. After that, I took the video I got from the drone shot and then put it in Blender to create an image sequence. And then I took that image sequence and put it into Meshroom. This was my first time using Meshroom, but it was super easy to understand, at least on a base level. And I'm sure it can get more complex if I learned what all those node things meant. After the scan completed in Meshroom, I grabbed the file from the textures folder and tried to import it into Blender, but it kept coming up with just a white material. So I looked online and found that somebody on Reddit had the same problem. And it turns out all I had to do was turn off correct exposure and re-render the texturing. Once that was done, the model looked great, and I just did a little bit of cleanup. I added some lights in, and then parented the light to my camera to create this close-up VHS look. I then animated the camera, going from right to left, down the wall, and then played with some of the fisheye settings and all of the lights. And then I added a little bit of glare in the compositing. Once I had it the way I liked it, I brought it into Premiere to do some color grading and also to add a more honed in fisheye effect, as well as a filter with some smudges on it to make it look more authentic. This is what the final render looked like for that. You can also check it out on my Instagram. For the last scan, we used a software called Luma 3D, which is a Nerf based software, which I'll link to a video below that you can check out what that means. But basically it's just a high quality reflection based 3D scanning software. The other benefit of Luma is that it's completely free and they let you export in all file formats, unlike Polycam. 
but the format that I chose to use for the render was a Gaussian splat. All you need to do is download a uh, Blender add-on, which I'll link below as well. And you can bring in these very interesting looking, almost like paint splotchy models um, that Gaussian splats allow you to create. Also, the other benefit of this was that I was able to render an EV and it looks pretty much the same as Cycles. I think this is new because I remember last time I tried to use a Gaussian splat, it was Cycles only. But um, this definitely freed up a lot of space on my computer. So that was great to see. Right here, I'm just changing the depth of field and animating it rotate. But I'd like to do more with this splat in the future. This is what the final render looked like. You can see how all the water beating off is kind of still caught in the render, which I really like. Recording? Yep. All right. Let me sit first. Beautiful day. <laughs> Beautiful day for a hot, hot, hot day. Quite hot. Quite hot. Yeah. Definitely needed this Sprite. Cool me off. <laughs> sprite tea. Sprite tea. But thank you for pulling up, man. Thank you for all the help. Yeah, man. No problem. No problem. I'm glad you like took to the 3D shit pretty quick. You you done it before? Um. Yeah. I mean, like I did like small amount just like to fuck around with. Yeah. But it's really not that hard. Yeah. Oh no. I mean, it's accessible. It's just like it's just like taking a lot of photos. Yeah. And the computer kind of does the rest. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I feel like the computer does like all of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite software that we used? Uh, Luma. Yeah. Dude, it's just so crisp. I would agree. It's I mean, something crisp. about that Nerf, man. Yeah. I think it, it's great for spatial. I think, um, uh, what was, uh, uh, poly, uh, Polycam? Yeah, Polycam. Polycam is nice, though. Yeah, I can't knock it's it. It's just a subscription. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're just getting into it, I feel like that's not the way to go. Especially if you don't have LiDAR. Yeah, Like, true. there's not really a point. But the 360 photo from Polycam is nice. Yeah. Like, I would rate that. That's a good... They, they kind of have, like, everything. Also, the thing that I didn't show you was the Polycam asset library, like, just off what people take. You can pull assets? Yes, yeah, so much assets. And, like, people are scanning all over the world. It's kind of cool. Dude, I mean, also, like, the Luma, um, being able to see everything is super sick. Yeah. Like, seeing what other people do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't download it. Oh, yeah. I'll have to get on the phone with the people at Luma and see if we can add some features. Call your PR guy. Hey, like the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call my PR guy. Like, it's it's a great activity for me as a 3D person right. to be like, hey, bro, you want to go scan some shit? Yeah. Like, a kind of like a, just a fun thing to do on a nice day. Yeah, it, it was fun until the dude tried to take your bag. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't see that on the camera. No, they didn't. That was rough. We should have got them. We should have chased them down with the camera like, bro, bro, bro. We've gone wild. <laughs> gone <laughs> wild. Yeah, that's a whole different YouTube channel. Nah. But yeah, I think, I think also just being able to like, I don't know, I've spent, I've spent my life with a very small group of friends and kind of using these videos to get me to push myself out of the comfort zone right. has been a honestly life-changing. Like I feel like I feel connected with my city and I feel connected with like the people around me. I think it's definitely important to like, like um, be social with others, even if you wouldn't be social with them at first, you know exactly. what I mean? Cause like, I, I told you this before, where it's like back in high school, right? Like I just like stuck with like a group, mm -hmm. you know? Me too, man. But there's, there's so much comfort there. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, the, the comfort aspect is like, probably the most important thing like everyone wants to be comfortable everybody no one doesn't want to be comfortable but like if you just stay comfortable you're just going to stay in one spot yeah you know you don't really grow in comfort yeah 100 yeah. percent there i mean like it's like cliche but there is like there is like discomfort is needed for to be to have growth you know absolutely no absolutely and i think this is a 
like we just really just started hanging out yeah and i think this being our like trial run was a good way to get <laughs> yeah. to know trial you run. yeah <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, shit was fun, for sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I wonder how much that sprite check is. 50. 50 mil. 50 mil. <laughs>